Welcome to 20 at Twilight, a weekly video post that provides a 20 minute guided meditation. A way of praying with scripture to conclude the day, focusing on and resting in the presence of God. I am Tracy Leslie, a certified spiritual director and senior pastor at Trinity United Methodist Church in downtown Lafayette. We begin with lighting our candle. As light departs, to let the earth be one with night, silence deepens in the mind. The basket of twilight brims over with colors gathered from the day. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I open this evening with portions of prayer from the book, A Season in the Desert by W. Paul Jones. As the sun descends and the day comes to a close, unto you, O oh God, we offer the works of our hands the ideas of our minds, the feelings of our bodies, and the dreams and visions of our hearts. We offer them to you. As the refining one, make beauty of them. As the incarnate one, take them into yourself. As the driving spirit, carry on without us this night. And at the close of this day, gift us with the refreshment of knowing that this day we have been co-creators with you. Amen. This evening, I want to use an app and invite you to breathe deeply in and out to the rhythm of a singing bowl, taking a deep breath into your belly and then slowly breathing out through your mouth. Breathing in and out each time that you hear the singing bowl. continuing a sermon series at Trinity on leadership. And another essential characteristic of good leaders is compassion. Good leaders lead from a place of compassion. No one wants to follow a leader who is lacking in compassion. The word compassion literally means to suffer with. When we go through difficult times, we need someone who will enter into our place of suffering, who will come alongside us. A good leader doesn't just know how to get out in front. A good leader knows how to come alongside during those times when we need support. 
In Greek, the language of the New Testament, there's a word, splachnizome, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of it, but it simply means to be moved with compassion, literally to be stirred deep within one's bowels or gut, right? So that's the origin of our English word splunking, right? When people go deep into the bowels of a cave to explore it. The Greeks believed that the bowels are the gut, not the heart, but the gut where the seat was the seat of emotion. And uh, we find that kind of thinking reflected even today in cliches that we have, things like, I've just got a gut feeling about it, right? Or her words were like a punch to my gut. In our gospels, we read sometimes that Jesus is stirred deep in his gut with compassion toward those who are suffering. There are times, right, when we feel so deeply for someone suffering that we feel it in our bodies. We embody their suffering. So our stomach might feel tight or queasy. When we deeply feel someone else's pain, when we suffer with them, we feel it in our own bodies. We have compassion. We embody their suffering. So this evening's scripture is a story of Jesus healing a leper. Jesus is motivated by compassion for the man. Hear this scripture in Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 40. A leper came to Jesus, begging him, and kneeling, he said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose be made clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was made clean. I want to invite you now to take a moment to consider someone with whom you have crossed paths who is in need of your compassion. This might be someone you deeply love and it's easy for you to feel compassion towards them or it might be someone with whom you struggle. It's hard for you to feel compassion for them. Perhaps they've made a lot of poor choices for themselves or their neediness is draining on you. I invite you to think of, of one person, to close your eyes and imagine yourself in the presence of that person. In your mind, gaze upon them. And take notice, what do you feel when you look at them? What do you feel in your own body? What do you see? What perhaps do you notice that you haven't noticed about them before? Look into their face, gaze into their eyes. And what do you feel? Let's go a little deeper with this, getting in touch a little bit more with our own body. How do you feel in general when you imagine yourself in this person's presence? Do you feel tired? Do you feel sad? Do you feel frustrated? 
Do you feel anxious? Does suffering with them make your own muscles tight or your stomach knotted? How is your body, how does your body respond to their suffering and their need for you to suffer with them? Finally, Jesus often expressed compassion through touch. In this story we read, moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched the man. I do want to say we always want to ask consent before we touch someone. There are certainly lots of instances where those who are suffering don't receive enough human touch. Or maybe the only touch they're getting is clinical touch. Because sometimes we feel uneasy about touching those who are physically sick or frail. We might feel uneasy about touching or even being in the presence of, of a homeless person Maybe they're a little unkept if they've been sleeping on the streets. But as human creatures, we need a gentle, compassionate touch. So take a moment to imagine yourself touching the person before you. Perhaps you might hold their hand. Or you might place your hand softly, gently on their shoulder or on their knee. Try to imagine how the compassion you feel for them within yourself might like you be communicated to them as it flows through your own body, through that gentle touch. Envision that in your mind. So I read this brief scripture one more time. Simply imagine yourself continuing to sit in the presence of this one who is suffering and needs another, needs you to suffer with them. A leper came to Jesus begging him and kneeling, he said to him, if you choose, you can make me clean. 
moved with compassion. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose to be made clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Let us pray. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of the night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Guide us waking, O Lord and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The peace of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. Amen.